Hello, everybody. My name is Rodgan. I am an artist. I doodle these things. I'm a designer, and today we are going to be drawing together. Yay! So grab your sketchbooks. Grab your favorite thing to do draw with, and let's um, let's draw. But what should we draw? So that's really up to you guys. So I normally allow this time for you all to ask questions so that I can answer with doodles. This provides two benefits. One, it allows you the chance to ask a professional illustrator something or other that you have been having issues with. And two, it allows me to shut my brain off and actually just draw uh, for hours at a time sometimes. So that is good practice for me, and it's good resources for you. So feel free to ask things. So I have lately, I'm going to talk a little bit about the things that I've been doing lately while you guys ask some stuff. I have been drawing ears. I've been drawing a lot of ears. And I'm going to grab my little thing. And we're going to zoom in. Zoom, zoom powers. Zoom, zoom powers, I said. No. There you go. And what I've been doing is I've been creating a lot of assets that come down to animal stuff because I have been working on a course for 21 Draw. I've been working on a course on how to draw adorable, cute animals. So I've been studying and making a gigantic amount of like efforts to learn how to explain how to draw certain things. Like literally all the way down to like whale tails versus shark tails and it's gonna be amazing so i gotta spend a lot of time working on assets and what are those assets that's like all the little things you see on the videos and you see uh and that you see like you know on the panels and like help things like all the things that help visualize what the teaching is that's what i gotta do and you know all the things that i teach well it's not like i can just go on google and find these things because most of the time it's information that's scattered all over the internet and in very remote little places and that's even if there is exactly what i want to teach so what happens a lot is that I have to create my own teaching material. So thus, you see a gigantic amount of uh, sketches. I pick and choose the best ones from all the ones that I do. And then I can use those for teaching material. So all this stuff is, uh, you know, it's, it's all for you guys. Let me put it like that. It's all for you guys. This is going to be a, essentially after I'm dead. When I die, hopefully it's not soon, but if I die, I want my legacy to be that of someone that helped bring joy to the world. No one has asked anything. We have 142 participants in this chat, and no one has asked absolutely anything. That is nutty. That's like the first time we've gone for like a couple minutes without anyone actually saying something. But maybe you guys just enjoy watching me draw with highlighter. Maybe that <laughs> that's that's the thing. Okay, we have a question. How do you decide perspective? Is that like the horizontal line where the viewer has eyes? Okay, 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 okay. That's a good one. That's a good one. A lot of things in perspective. So, dun dun dun. Let's show you how to draw perspective. Uh, okay, what am I working on? I'm working on a lot of animal assets. Like, I've been working on this non stop for the last like 72 hours. Uh, it's been pretty fun. Uh, okay, okay. So, perspective. How do you decide perspective? So, perspective is decided by a couple factors. Actually, it's kind of decided by one factor now that I think of it. But 
All right, so we have perspective, and we're going to have a couple different views. Um, doesn't have to be a horizontal one. It can be like a scene in any shape or form, okay? I'm going to explain that. So your drawing can be whatever kind of uh, shape, size, or whatever. The first thing that you got to do in any scene is determine where the horizon line is going to be. Yes, it's kind of uh, pointless when you have, like, you know, a portrait. But, but, it still can play a huge role. Uh, let's say that you have, like, a character right here. But you want to put him into perspective. Well, the first thing that you got to do is that you got to set a horizon line. No... Vicky Toria TT, we don't do uh, these live invite things there on this. I'm trying to teach them. Okay, so we have a horizon line. The horizon line is going to be essentially like the farthest point your eye can see, the horizon, right? So if your horizon line is right there, let's say like that's about eye level. Actually, the middle would be eye level. The middle would be eye level uh, perspective. Now, from there, that is going to be the beginning of your perspective grid. And depending on a couple factors, that's how you normally do it. You normally set up perspective like a focal point and then from there all your lines are going to originate the lines in the spacing are going to get progressively smaller now if you're trying to figure out the distance between that it's actually really easy it's incredibly easy it, like it's so easy that you guys are going to think it's ridiculous to find the middle point between two objects or within an object it's very simple to just cut it in half cut it in half and any intersecting point with an x is going to be your halfway point now yeah in a circle that looks kind of ridiculous because splitting it in half is already splitting it in half but if you have something like a box and you split it in half, you get the exact middle. Now, how does this apply to something like perspective? Like, okay, let's say that we have an object that we draw in space and we're like, woo, we want this pillar to repeat over and over into the distance. But we don't know how much distance we got to put from here to here. We got to put, I don't know, a few pillars. So you can take from here to here, set the distance of the height in which you want to have for your pillar at the end. Connect it. Split this in half. That could be a pillar. Split this in half. And then middle. That could be another pillar. Split this in half. Middle, that's another pillar. And that's how you start placing things in perspective. Right? This works with this. It works with houses. As well, let's make this into a house. Right? And if you're trying to figure out the middle part of the house... You split this shape, boom. That's the middle. Let's say you have a weird shape. And you're trying to figure out the middle. Boom, boom. Middle, middle, boom, middle, yay! And you can just start placing things into perspective like that. That is... 
essentially the easiest way to do it. Now, if you move your horizon line, you're going to move how much ground or how much space you have. So the top of the horizon line is the sky. The bottom is the ground. So when you're having, you know, like the horizon line change, it actually changes the perspective in which you see your character. Because this character right here, even though it's just a face, you still should map them out into the perspective points or to a perspective point within... Because you can have multiple points for your perspective. You can have multiple points on the horizon line. And then build your character's perspective like that. That way you have proper placement and proper viewing... For everything. So that's why we learn perspective as character designers. As character designers, you know, we're not necessarily doing like all the backgrounds and like the foregrounds and all that stuff. All that stuff is for, you know, normally background artists and, you know, people like that. Uh, I have little to absolutely no uh, patience to sit there and paint a whole scenery. It's just not the way that my brain works. But I can sit there and draw humans and animals and characters for like 15, 20 hours a day. For some reason, that just doesn't bother me. doesn't tire me. So I leave the heavily perspective stuff for other people. Now, when we're using horizon lines, uh, this is what happens. Boom, boom, boom. So essentially, you're moving a camera, Right? Uh, how do I represent this? I'm going to represent this with somebody looking into the distance. Or at the middle, you're going to have the camera right in the middle. Right? Yeah, let's try a little t-shirt on them. Let's make them little rods. Yay! With mustaches. Okay, so at the middle horizon line, it's eyesight, right? So you get equal size ground, equal size sky. Cool. When the horizon line is moved, you get different views. When you move the horizon line down, that means that you're moving ground down. So that means that you're moving your camera down. So you're going to see a little bit more of the sky. So you're going to see the character a little bit different. You're going to start seeing them a little bit from underneath. Because you're seeing into the sky a little more. right? So you're slightly, slightly seeing them from the bottom. Depending on how far down you draw it. But you start seeing a lot less. Uh, let's actually ground them. Not having them off the screen. So you start seeing a little bit more from underneath. And you see a lot more sky. Also, the clouds don't just like pop up like this when you're looking at something from underneath. Clouds have depth. Clouds, imagine them like the top of cupcakes. Right? They still have depth. They have a top and a bottom. So when you're looking at things from different angles, you got to change the way that they look. They still look like clouds, but they have a definite bottom to them. Okay? So keep that in mind with objects as you move the horizon line down. Things tend to have more of a steep angle as well, right? Like buildings and stuff like that behind your characters would have a more steep angle because the horizon points tend to be a lot more angled.
so you get all these uh, social media like pictures and this one things tend to if they're going into the horizon line everything is just standardly going to that place now let's move the horizon line up and let's just move it and put it here so if we move the horizon line up we see a lot less sky so we're gonna see a lot more ground which means that if we have to ground our character, we're going to end up seeing a ton more ground, which means that we're seeing this from a lot higher up. So you would start seeing a little bit more force perspective. You wouldn't see any clouds, really, from the horizon point being right there. But, you know, you can still have your buildings and stuff like that. And let's emphasize the top and the bottom by using our nifty highlighters. So that would be roughly what happens when we start placing things into perspective and how horizon lines work. All right, so if you guys are enjoying and learning anything, please uh, click the little heart thingy because it helps me with the Insta uh, with not Instagram with uh, TikTok algorithm. Now I also do apologize about my fan, but it is stupidly warm where I live, so I need it to be able to uh, do this for a couple hours. Yay! Okay, so I'm going to scroll up and find the first question asked recently. I didn't look at the chat for a while. So I'm going to scroll up while I sip my coffee. So you guys have like 10 seconds to ask your questions. And I'm going to choose the coolest one between the bunch. You know what I need? I need a little soundboard that I can make, like, little effects so I can be, like, a radio DJ. Like, in the mornings with Rodgon. In the Rodgon the Artist Hour here on TikTok. No, we're not going to draw a whole page of clouds. That's silly. Why would we draw a whole page of clouds? Where did you go to school for this? I didn't go to school for this. I went to school for 3D animation, which taught me a lot of cool stuff, but it didn't teach me how to draw. Uh, the drawing part was taught by myself. Uh, unloading myself, where did you learn to draw? Where did you go to art school for this? Where did you learn to draw? <laughs> if it was, You guys have similar names. I thought it was the same person. I was about to be like, stop! I need help with portraits. We are in a heat wave in Texas, too. Yeah, we're in, I'm in California. Thanks for the lessons. Where, where do you live? I live in San Diego. Okay, so I learned to draw uh, essentially out of pure competition. Uh, mostly because I, I was working at a place called SeaWorld San Diego. I joined this uh, caricature team called Commons Art Shops, and I l joined it because I needed to learn how to draw, because I was going to be an animator 
apparently. And、uh, apparently, being an animator for these people meant that you don't have to draw, which is fucking stupid. But, you know, I went through with it. I learned a lot. When I came out,、uh, I had a lot of skills that I could be employed with because、uh, I'm just who I am and I learned everything like a fucking sponge. And, you know, it, it worked for me. But, but, I'm unfortunately the exception that comes along with that.、Uh, because a lot of people that I went to school with, a lot of them, like a lot more than I would feel happy, like, and comfortable, like, saying,、uh, they ended up in a lot of debt. And they ended up in a lot of debt because they weren't able to do anything with their career. So, you know, it, it's every time that you go to college for anything, right?、Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a freaking gamble. You are essentially gambling the idea of being able to make a living with whatever you are choosing to, you know, go for. So, if you go to be a doctor, you're like, okay,、uh, I know that I'm going to be able to make a living being a doctor. And I can, I'm expecting that. So, you know, you're like, okay, cool. I'm going to gamble my future on that. Well, you know, it's a little bit more、um, stressful when your future is connected to your creativity. People think that it's a leisurely uh, uh, career. I can't stress this enough. If you can't create, you can't eat. So it's,、um, you need to train that shit out of you. You need to train the fact that you need inspiration. If you're going to make this as a living, if you need inspiration, that's the biggest deterrent. Like, you can't need inspiration to draw. If you're going to make this as a living, ask any, any artist that has done any production work. If you require、uh, inspiration, you're not going to make it. It's going to be really hard. Uh, okay, so I'm from Texas. The difference in California, most people don't have AC. Be right back.、Uh, okay.、Uh, I'm struggling with doing character turnarounds and not losing the shapes in the three quarter half profile. Okay, so turnarounds are not incredibly difficult. You just need to understand the shapes in order to be able to, to get them a little bit more accurate. So let's say we have. A grid. Like, we're just going to do like a straight line and we're going to create a circle. We're going to attempt because this normally takes longer than a couple minutes to get right. But we're going to attempt to create a turnaround. So this one's going to be a standard frontal face. This one's going to be a three、uh, profile face. We're not drawing the jaw yet because we don't know what type of jaw we're going to draw. I'm just realizing that the top of the face up to the nose is normally relatively flat with a curve. That's, that's what I acknowledge in my profiles. And then a three quarter view into my nose. Okay? So the first thing that we are going to identify is the nose. We already know that this point right here is going to be the same on all of them. So we draw a line and we mark that. Okay? So now I know that my nose is going to be from here to here, from here to here, and every single one of the drawings, regardless of what view that we see in it. Now the next step is to identify well, we already have the bottom of the jaw. Fuck it. Let's just make it that. Let's make a character that looks like that. Why not? We already know that the jaw is going to reach all the way down here, so we just have to set in the three quarter view angle, or on the profile one, the angle of our bottom jaw. I'm going to bring it in like this a little bit. By bringing it in, now I have an angle for my three quarter one.
Cool. Now the next step is to identify the sides with the jaw. So the first step that I do is I go into my profile, identify where I want my ear. I'm going to set it a little bit back. I'm going to identify that point in perspective because this is a sphere as well, right? It's a profile sphere, but it's a sphere. That's going to be one, one point in my ear. My other point in my ear is going to be back there. That means that one point of my ear is going to have to be right here. From here to here, we have another mapping point, but we'll wait until we actually draw that ear. We're just mapping it out right now. The ear goes right there. Now let's draw it in profile. We'll draw it to the bottom of the circle just to make it nice and easy. So once I have one section mapped out, again, we're going to mark a line. Uh, I am a smiley. I love your videos. They completely changed how I learned to draw. Oh, I, well, I hope so. I hope so. That's the, the point. Uh, so we have an ear. From now, we have the mark of the ear. It's up here. It seems a little tall, but, you know, that's just the very tip to the bottom of the circle. So from here to here, we have an ear. Okay, from here to here, we have an ear. Well, let's do the zoom zoom powers one more time. So someone asked about a turnaround. Um, is this for my question? Yeah, I think so. So we have... So far, the ear. We need to learn where the ear is so that we can know how our jaw is going to come down. We see that the little point is right there. So that's where it changes direction. So once we already have that point, it's going to come down, and that's where it changes direction. Okay, do do do. Now it's time to draw some features. Now that we actually have the shape of the face, how we want it, now it's time to draw some features. Uh, we can use a lot of these same guides because, you know, certain aspects of anatomy fall into the same guidelines. For example, at the top of your ears, all the way to your forehead, if you follow that line, that circular line, that is normally your eyebrow line. So let's draw some eyebrows. Same line. Let's look at the spacing that I left for the nose, I left about the same width of the nose. So at the widths of the nose, that's when we draw our eyebrows. Okay, width of our nose. Eyebrows. Then uh, anime heads are not drawn any different than a normal head. The one thing that you are going to have a lot of trouble with is drawing your faces like this. Right? Drawing your faces like this, but not understanding what that has inside. Like, if you don't understand that this has a skull... or has volume. If you can't see those little tiny things within a shape that you're trying to draw into a face, that's like, see, there's a difference between learning a style and then learning how to draw something. 
A person can replicate a style very easy. Replicating a style is not really all that hard. It's just a matter of repetition and muscle memory. Learning how to draw something is incredibly more difficult because you, I can draw an eye by just drawing an almond shape and then drawing all the little details, right? I can draw that very easy. Now, understanding the concepts of what you drew, so I drew a, an eyeball because that's an eyeball that I'm drawing. The eyeball has depth, has perspective, has different aspects of it, like, I don't know the names of the things, but <laughs> the little colored part, the little highlighty part, oh, it's a highlight, and the little color absorption part. And then after that, we have eyelids that wrap around my sphere. And then we have a lower eyelid that also wraps around creating that almond shape is because it's going around the sphere. Right? So if I understand that that's why it's round, because it's like a little blanket, right? That's wrapping around this sphere inside. And that's how it makes sense to me. So once it makes sense to me in this style, or not this style, like once I understand the concept behind it, I can turn anything into an eye now. I can turn a cube into an eye. Oh, that's a weird shape, right? To make into an eye. But now let's apply the same concepts. We'll wrap something around it. And then just draw an eye. And you can draw an eye out of a box. Because you know, you understand the concepts behind it. right? So anime eyes are literally the same as normal eyes. Only the inside color part is a little bit different. So a normal eye. And then we have an uh, anime eye. We're just drawing the eyeball. Okay? The anime eye is going to have, like, some weird highlight or whatever. Anime eyes, the eyelid is just incredibly exaggerated and very, very squarish. So that's what your eyelid is doing around your eyeball. A normal person... A normal drawing is the eyelid is a lot bigger and a lot less of the eye is shown. So you end up with a styling that gives you more of an anime look. Anyways, going back to the uh, to this thing. So you slowly start building all three at the same time using little landmarks from each one of them as reference. Uh, for the nose, let's make the nose. It's easier to draw the nose in profile because, you know, it's just easier. You get a better shape for it. So let's get this shape going on. The nose bridge, normally this little divot in your eye, it happens at the middle of your eyes. For the most part. So that's the middle of your eye. That's where your eye. Your for, uh, eyebrow line. The little divot that leads to your eyebrows. Into your nose. Pew, pew. That little angle. That happens right around where the middle of your eyes is. So if you keep that in mind. It makes it really easy to draw things. Like, with faces. <laughs> okay, so our nose is going to be a little diamond that sticks out from that nose canal. Cool. I'm going to move on to the front view. In the front view, remember that objects are coming towards you. So they are a little bit more distorted than they would be in the side view or the three-quarter view. They tend to be a little bit bigger 
slightly because they're coming into perspective. They're coming to you. This is also the best time to set how wide you want your nose bridge. It's a diamond. The diamond starts right here. Okay, cool. So a diamond, and I just check the different parts in comparison to the other one. So I'm constantly just comparing. Now with these two, I can just map out everything else and then come up with my three quarters. The little divot, the nose extends a little bit past the eyebrows. That seems about right. And then we have a diamond. From here, we can mark out the middle part of this shape. And then we got to start figuring out what the mouth is going to be like. Let's keep it nice and simple for this instance because, uh, yeah, you can go into heavy detail, but let's just keep it nice and simple. We'll make them nice and frowny. Okay, these same points, you can literally translate everything across. So, we have our mouth. Let's set the midpoint of our mouth. And then we'll figure out the, the slightly like elevated parts from there. So, the midpoint of our mouth is right there. This side is going to be lifted a little bit, and it's going to lead to the middle of, or actually the edge of our nose. That's roughly where it leads to. But it's an angled position. Remember, it's not going completely down. This bottom part is angled a little bit. So the edge of my nose, angle. Edge of my nose. Nudge my nose. So we know that that leads up. And that leads up to here. I can determine how far out my lip is going to go from here as well. So let's make the lip go out a little bit. If you want to uh, have an open mouth, I'll show you in a second. Uh, if you want to have just a closed mouth, ba -ba, ba -ba, the lip has roundness. It's not just this. It's this, but it's roundness. It's depth. The chin is right here, so I'm going to mark the chin again with something light, like a pencil or, in this case, highlighter. So if my chin is right there, I need to determine how far out it's going to come out. And I'm going to determine in my profile that it's going to be about this big. So that means that it has to match that same size on your three quarter. And then it goes on to that. The eyes, just keep them nice and simple, right at the eye line. And that is how you would go about creating, uh, you know, turn -alongs. Now, it's more complicated when you have a lot more things going on. Like a whole body and, like, different elements that you have to keep in mind. Like, you know, uh, accessories and things like that. But that's why I'm saying it's not something that you normally can do in, like, five, ten minutes. But this is a good example of how you can start visualizing it. Eh, eh, I don't want to erase the lines. I mean, ah, one of the times that highlighting is a bad thing. Don't do it. It's not always about highlighting, Rod. 
highlighting does not fix your life. <laughs> okay, uh, ice. No. Yes. Okay. Uh, after I am done with that drawing, how do you... How do I add the eyes to a head? I'm still a beginner at drawing. How do you add the eyes to a head? Well, okay. Uh, I'm going to take you through a couple stages of that. That way you can understand. First, cheers. Oh my god, I cannot express to you guys. Like, my apprentice during Christmas, and I still haven't sent him this. But... He sent me, my apprentice Corey sent me this, and uh, he knows that I'm a pretty, like, solitary person, so I don't really go out and do much. I, I enjoy my company, and that's normally enough. But he knows that I don't, and he sent me that, and I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> people care about me. <laughs> it's just, it's just awesome. Teach people, and they will love you for some reason. Uh, okay, so drawing the eyes on a head. Well, let's start with the very, very, very beginner. We'll start by drawing maybe some uh, happy face eyes, right? Like, that's how you normally would start, like, drawing faces. Let's say that's the very first start. After that. You can start by adding a little bit more detail, maybe to the mouth, maybe you open it up, and maybe you start adding eyebrows. Still, maybe some ears in the shape of like little circles. That would be uh, step number two. Step number three, that's when you would start adding little tiny details, like maybe like you start drawing like circle eyes. Circle eyes are my favorite, and I'm going to show you how to make them into little eyes. Circle eyes are my favorite, and I'm going to show you how to make them into like actually decent like looking eyes, like animation eyes. In a second. Your eyebrows, maybe get a little bit more girth. Because you start adding a little bit more detail. Ears are hard normally for people. So they start simplifying them. By just making little things like this. And let's add a little nose. In the shape of a circle. Because we all learn to draw in basic shapes. So basic shapes means. That everything stays relatively simple. From there, maybe you add a tiny bit of styling, and that's when you start drawing things that are a little bit more fun. Like, once you get to this stage, you're going to be able to, uh, to draw relatively okay. Now, you're going to take that same shape, but you're going to add little minuscule things. So the eyes, instead of being just circles, they might be circles, but you start darkening up certain lines to make things stand out. Right? So you darken the top and a little bit of the bottom. Then maybe you start adding little details like highlights to your eyes. And your eyebrows, now you have learned a couple tips like, you know, like the single line and then splitting it technique where you draw a single line and then you just split it to create really cool eyebrows that's one that helped me a lot so you start learning tips and techniques and things that you will know, help you so by this point you should know that your nose has uh, I don't know at least nostrils 
And that's also going to be the point where you start drawing little things like the details on the side of the mouth. We don't really know what they are yet, but we just draw them. And then we start drawing teeth, but we don't know how to draw teeth. So we just draw lines. We still don't know how to draw ears, but we start playing around with things like hair. And we normally use basic shapes because that's all we really are comfortable with at this point. Okay, so at this point, you can actually start having fun with it because you're uh, playing around with a lot. And this is going to be the spot where you're learning a lot. Okay, this is going to be like a section of growth. When you, this is initial stages. Like this is if you like determine if you're even remotely close to being able to be uh, an artist, right? This is gonna be like the average person is going to be within these two of like talent. So an average person is not gonna have much artistic skill. And they're going to be fascinated by absolutely everything that has to do with anyone being able to draw. When you get to these stages, this is going to be more of a person that took like art class in like high school or elementary school. And they kind of know how to draw, but they don't really know how to draw yet. But they know how to draw a little bit. From here, this is the person in... My opinion, that would be probably going to college for it and actually or trying to at least get a career into it. The next step is actually understanding that head shapes are actually built out of shapes. What what does that mean, Rod? Well, this is what it means. It means that you take your basic shape and you start seeing them as three-dimensional shapes with volume and and things, not just flat. 3D. Now, how does that apply to the character like that? Well, it's actually relatively simple. Even the ears being simple like that have depth. The nose has depth. The eyes have depth. The mouth, we start understanding that like basic anatomy, <laughs> like noses, eyeballs even the eyebrows have depth okay and that translates to our drawing by us being able to add volume to our line work Okay. So if everything has depth and everything has a shape, then it's much easier to go in and create those lines confidently knowing where they're going to land and where they're supposed to overlap and where they're supposed to... Right? So most people get stuck in between these two stages. Most people that go into art as a career get stuck in between these two stages. And the reason is because we get really happy and comfortable with where we are. So we, if we are always happy and we are getting praise for the things that we're doing we're going to be less likely to actually need to push ourselves to be able to improve. And it's like fascinating to me 
uh, because it happens a lot. It happens quite a bit. Um, yeah. So this is the stage that you got to overcome. You got to be able to go from this, from your learning stage and like happy go lucky stage to this and visualizing and understanding. This is more of an understanding phase. Because you already know how to draw all this stuff by the time you get here. It's just now it's understanding and trying to figure out why and how you're drawing what you're drawing. Right? It's like your own level of um, inspiration, like self-expression needs to be understood to a certain extent instead of just drawing. And when you understand, then you can deconstruct. Once you are able to understand how things are built, you are no longer bound by style. At this point, you can transform this into absolutely anything because you understand how the shapes are made. So now I can start distorting the shapes. Right, those same shapes, we just start moving them. And you start coming up with more fun designs that are outside of what you normally would have drawn because now you understand those shapes. So I'm just moving those same shapes into just different positions. And now let's see what comes up. It would be something along the lines of like an old man since the cheekbone is up or like a superhero character. Okay, so it's, you got to just learn to understand what you're watching, what you're seeing, what you're like drawing. And that is going to, that's going to be what leads you to being able to create your own styles, your own, uh, like your own path, your own learning, your own techniques. And I find myself around this area right now, right? I find myself here where I can confidently explain the things that I do and I'm able to actually... Uh, interpret things in different ways like it doesn't i don't require one path to get to a final outcome i can now create my path depending on what i want to start with what i want to focus on and that's a, it's a wonderful thing like i never thought that i would get to this point Like, this is where, like, little Rod back in college, like, I would see people that could draw and be expressive like this, and I thought they were gods. Like, I straight up was like, dude, like, you have the, like, imagination, like, skills of, like, what I want to do. Like, that is what I aim to do. So it was like, I'm finally there, and it feels really good. Uh, okay, let's see. So... If you're trying to understand where you are, uh, normally understand that these two are normally the beginner stages. Uh, this is more like the average person. This is more so a person with artistic skills. But unrefined. This is more of a person refining and actually learning, learning with the purpose of being an artist. This is now learning, understanding your art. And then this is more deconstructing and reconstructing. and construction of your own style. 
Now, not saying that you can't create your own style without this knowledge. Yeah, it's absolutely possible to create your own style at any stage. But being able to do that with, you know, with purpose, with the ability to actually understand what you're doing, that's, that's a fantastic, like, you know, power. Now, okay, I'm going to have to cut it short because I have some stuff that I got to go do. But if you guys enjoyed a little bit of what I taught today, leave me a little heart. Come on. Uh, uh, don't leave me hanging. Give me a little heart right here while I draw a little goodbye. Uh, I've been drawing platypuses a lot. So I'm going to draw a little goodbye platypus. And goodbye platypus is going to be eating ice cream. And this is just going to be a quick representation of uh, the whole concept of, you know, seeing things in 3D. So I'm going to give myself a low horizon line because I want a pretty straightforward shot. I'm going to start building the little shapes of the body, which incorporates a beanbag. And a couple little shapies for his feet. This little tail is going to be like a little beaver tail. It's going to extend past this. And then he's going to have a beak. So beaks. Now, is he going to be engulfing the ice cream? Nah, he's going to be all messy. So I'm going to have him his beak right here. The beak is kind of like the Pringle shape that we uh, have come in love because of hands, right? Then the beak comes up to the middle of the face, and then it goes down. From the middle of the face point, I'm going to give it a big forehead. So it's going to go around my sphere a little bit more. And yeah, and then his arms. He's going to have arms. So the arms are going to be holding the ice cream. So one arm has to be a little bit closer up to his little doggy paws uh ducky paws not doggy paws okay and we'll even out the body shape okay so with that information right there i can deconstruct this and just start creating my character so i already know where the middle of the face is so i know that the rest of my head is going to be going around that so Platypuses are normally pretty fuzzy, so I'm just gonna have a little cross hatchy like feel to or a little like feathery feel to my line work. The next step is I'm going to figure out whatever's in the foreground, the closest to me, and then I'm gonna start drawing that first. So um, in this case it's the little foot. So his little footy is now going to be drawn. Then after that, the reason that I draw these things from front to back is because it allows me to now start playing around with the shapes behind it. So my thigh is going to be relatively chunky. So you would only see a little bit there. I don't even think you would see a little bit right there. And I'm mostly going to demonstrate that shape by giving it a little cast shadow from the foot. So now I have the back side of my body, which allows me a chance to draw my tail. I already have my general guideline for it, and I just got to build a basic shape for it on top of that. So they're kind of boxy. Okay, and now I create a, I ground my character. I have my horizon line, so I know that my shadows have to be within this angle, right? This is a horizon line, and I had my horizon point. That's going to be the general direction of my shadows. That's why it's really good to understand these concepts really, really quickly. Like, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be a draft fan. You don't have to be, like, a, you know, engineer. But you got to have at least a basic understanding of them. Uh, let's see, I'm going to have ice cream on top of his head because he's a little messy eater. 
little cherry. So ice cream is going to be all melted on top of his head. Oh, perfect, because then he can be all sad because the ice cream's on his head now and it's not in this little thing. Okay, perfect. So we're going to have his little ice cream cone and he's going to have his little paw, like, all sad. So holding it down. Normally when you draw shapes looking down, it'll mean, like, depressing, sad, or downward, like, it, it, like, shape language has a big part to do with anything. Um, quick mini lesson right here. Whenever you draw a face, a uh, shape like that, what does that look like? It looks like a little sad face, right? And then when you draw a shape like that, that's normally a happy face. So when you, by adding just little shapes like that, you can make something really happy or really sad. Mm. Now, our brains technically see these things whenever we are, like, observing things. So it's just really weird little tiny, like, psychological things uh, that play a role into our designs. And we got to keep those in mind whenever we are, like, drawing. It just enhances your art. Like, it doesn't make your art bad if you don't know it, but it's just going to make it better if you do. This little ice cream, and he's going to be sad, so his little face needs to be sad. With, uh, with ducks, it's weird because you have to bring the beak up and then down again. gonna give it depth you know it's not just a flat surface it has depth so that little tiny ridge has a huge role to play right that little ridge that little tiny negative space right here this one it just it provides all the depth of the beak that i like how thick it is so it's very important that i draw that in the beak is gonna curve up onto where the eye and that that's this point right here is this point right here. Okay, it's just on a ducky. That point is where the nose bridge, the nose bone, connects to the forehead, creating a divot. Okay? So that's, uh, that's it. That's how you do it. Uh, that's how you figure out that point. And since we know that that's the middle of where our eyes are supposed to go, right? Because that's not just for humans. It actually works for a lot of species. So we know that our eyes are supposed to be right there. Now, uh, how do we draw a little pouty lip mm, when there's no lip? Mm, I don't know if that's going to work out. It's going to look like a little tongue. Eh. There you go, that works. Just got to make sure that this wraps around and then we draw the rest of the body. Because we didn't draw a neck, but now we have to because we moved the, the bottom of the mouth up. So now the bottom of the mouth looks something like that. Just kind of weird, but that still works. That means that we just have to draw the other side of the face coming into the neck of the body. Because we're looking at through this, right? We have our body right here. Our, you know, the side of our face is right there. So that means the side of the other face, the other side of the face is right here because we're following through on the other side of the shape. So that's why the neck comes in right there. Okay, now we are going to finish up the beak now that we know the curvature of the bottom of the mouth. He 
he's sad because his little ice cream thing fell. And now we draw the bottom of the body, a shadow for the ice cream on the ground. And we draw the other foot. Again, trying to give a little perspective. Now, how sad do we want this platypus? You know, I'm going to draw him as sad as I am because I got to leave the stream. How about that? <laughs> how about I draw him that sad? Uh, to make a person sad, you literally first, first, first act it out yourself. Act as sad as you want it to be like, <laughs> here, hold on. Let me see if I can, uh, can you, how do you flip the camera on this one? I have no idea. There's no like quick button to do it. But if you're sad, you want to go, <laughs> right? So it's, um, it's like your face needs to like replicate that. Hold on. Give me a second. Ha ha ha! Ha 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 ha! Mirror time! Let's see if I can make a mirror and then you can see my face in the mirror. Okay, mirror's right there. Now you're looking at my backdrop. Now, where is my face? There's my face. Okay, so when you're sad. Your eyebrows go down. And they squinch up on the sides. Okay. Sorry about that. But we made it work. So, a sad face squinches up on the bottom. And it seems like your eyes are also kind of closed. And then your lips move up. So, we're going to do that. We're going to have our eyes. We're going to define our eyebrows first. So, nice and simple. We're just going to bring them down. The eyebrow muscle would actually protrude a little bit from this point. Because you walk, like, looking at it three quarters. That's our eyebrows. And then our eyes. The spacing between here and here would be a little bit bigger than the one on the side. It looks like he's mourning now. He's just mourning his ice cream. <laughs> Oh my god, these are so cute. Uh, okay, so let me show you guys the other previous uh, platypuses we've drawn. So we drew a axolotl. We have an anarchy axolotl that we keep on drawing. But where's Boba? There you go. Boba Platypus. So I, I might end up making these guys into little... Uh, into little stickers. Those are cute. Um, but yeah, like little platypus are really fun to draw. I used to draw a little one called... Um, I used to draw a purple one. Let me see if I have a watercolors here. I'm just going to draw it purple. So I used to have this little character called Platy the Platypus. I was not very good at naming things. Uh, as you can tell, but Platy the platypus used to get killed like Kenny all the time. He used to get run over. He used to get like uh, stamped, like stomped on. He used to just like get killed all the time. Uh, opinion on bald Kuda Pika. I have no idea who Kuda Pika is. Uh, if that's like an artist or like um, like a person of like you know like entertainment or that. Uh, 
a rapper or something. I have no idea. I keep myself away from any social media, st- like any like celebrity stuff. Honestly, there's literally no benefit for me to uh, to know what the hell their lives are doing. Like it does not change my life at all if uh, someone like got divorced, someone got like you know like killed, someone got slapped. Like I I found out about the whole like uh, Will Smith thing like my like, I think weeks later like weeks later just because i don't care (laughs) like anything that happens on with those people's lives affect me absolutely in no way shape or form so uh i normally don't get too uh hung up on anything that has to do with uh celebrities but sad Sad, 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 platy. That's gonna be, yeah, I'm just gonna be, it's gonna be platy. Sad, sad, platy has to be sad because Rod has to go now. So, thank you all so much for uh, tuning into my stream. We had about like 200 people in the chat at one point, which is awesome. It's amazing that so many people tune in. Uh, to watch me draw every morning. Uh, yeah, it's been a little inconsistent lately because uh, I have not slept in like the last like 72 hours. So it's been a lot of busy days for me. So I normally can't find the energy to sit back and actually extreme for, you know, what seems like a couple hours sometimes nowadays. Uh, so we will continue on this one. We'll make them a little bit, video, uh, the videos a tiny bit shorter, but we will have... Uh, just more fun with them because then I can target them a little bit structured more. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I'm going to go get some coffee. Uh, hope you guys learned a lot. If you guys did, you know what to do. Uh, there is a bunch of resources for you for free online. I have a YouTube channel with over 120 videos of just pure drawing knowledge like this or better like actually probably much better than this um so that is one fantastic way that you can go about learning little things like how to draw noses how to draw the eyes how to draw faces all that stuff i have videos that go extensively into them uh explained pretty much the same way that i'm explaining things right now uh just nice and simple ways that you guys can see them uh, I don't regurgitate information that other people do uh, normally because, you know, that's not how my brain works. So I don't like explaining things in a way that I don't understand. Them. So that is it for today. Hello, little Rod. Do you want to say the outro? Okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you guys so much for watching my stream. If you guys want to help support this motherfucker right here, well, you guys can go buy his books. His books are on his Instagram link on his bio. It should be the Stand By Me link also here on TikTok, but it doesn't work here. So just copy it onto a browser, I guess. Uh, Yeah, two books. One with really hot ladies like this. A lot, like 60 pages worth of hot ladies. Woo! And the other one with awesome just doodles and the best doodles that I've drawn over the last six years. So thank you all so much. That is the best way to support me as an artist. Thank you for everything. And you guys have a fantastic day. I'm going to go draw now. Tick, 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 tick.